Okay, so right now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start a, extending the wires on these uh, motors. Um, like I said, they were, uh, I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, but these are some cheap but reasonably effective 1104 7000 kV motors or 7500 yeah, 7,500 kV motors. I don't know if it's going to focus on that. Um, but long story short, they um, came with this weird enamel wire, which is not really ideal for soldering. So we're going to go through um, my how I'm going to extend these wires as the first step of the build process. Obviously, you need to have the motors primed and mounted. So we're going to go extend these, we're going to heat shrink them um, with some very narrow, what is it, uh, I think it's like 2 millimeter, 3 millimeter heat shrink or something. Um, and we're going to mount them on the frame and then uh, we can get right to uh, soldering them to the 4-in-1 and then uh, figuring out which pins we want to go to the uh, Femto and how we're going to power it. Um, one thing to note here on the flight controller is that the battery lead is mounted here. I will actually end up desoldering this and um, I will end up desoldering this and mounting it onto the 4-in-1 because I am the 4-in-1 has a VBAT output which is going to go right to these pads. So let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to turn my soldering iron on. Uh, currently my soldering setup is the uh, Pace STM30. Um, I don't know where I got it but I love it and it's got really really nice uh, interchangeable tip system um, so let's get right to it um, for this I'm pretty much just going to be using a helping hand that's kind of been mangled over the years um, and as you can see all these wires have been tinned some well some not so well but it doesn't matter it's going to be heat shrunk uh, so let's just touch up some of these wires and get these connected uh, I will walk through I think two with you guys and by that point, I think you'll be angry if I put any more because this is very basic soldering. Um, to all you soldering nuts out there, I do have some bad practices. Please do not rip me. No, you can rip me. It's fine. Um, but as you can see, this wire is very... It's not, it's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. It's just... It's disgusting. Uh, when I get some cash flow, I will definitely upgrade to... I was looking at the uh, Hyperlite 1104s. Uh, I don't know if I think Kebab helped design them. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to upgrading this build as I go by. But power wise, I think these motors should be just fine. Um, yeah. So I like to do black always in the middle. Um, don't know why. I don't know if it means it's a ground connection, but I just like the way it looks. I got it from uh, these motors, which are. You know, black in the middle, yellow on my right, and red all the way out. So that's kind of nice. Um, these motors suck. Please do not use these on a build if you are going to. Um, I just like the look. So we're going to start soldering. Uh, I will not actually wrap these wires around each other because my fingers are a little bit too meaty to do that. So we got one wire done. On the cow, it's not even on camera, so let's unsolder that and show you that. Step so we got one wire right here. Uh, I know this is something of a butt joint or an end to end joint. Um, there's really, I mean, it's a small quad, there's not gonna be much stress on it anyway, so it's not ideal, but it's not detrimental in any way either. Um, uh, this one's a little bit long, but that's okay. Um, if you do get motors brand new, um, I highly, highly suggest not cutting them down. Um, obviously, like I said, I initially, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, I cut these down to work on these little bullet ESCs because, you know, I had them mounted on the arm as such, but these bullet ESCs are glorified garbage, so I would not go with them. Uh, so, always think through, I guess the moral of that story is always think through your build before you go through with it. Um, how am I going to shrink this heat shrink? Um, I need to get a better method of shrinking my heat shrink, but right now it's going to be uh, matches, unfortunately. Um, let's go see how long do we want this. I still want the wire to be flexible, so obviously 
you don't want too much heat shrink. So, so you take diagonal cutters and see how much is exposed. So we have about eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch exposed over there. I know that's a bit of a variable measurement, but you see that. Um, so we're gonna snip right here about this much off and oh, where'd that piece go? Okay. So we're gonna snip that off and then we're gonna need three for each motor, so that leaves you about 12, roughly five millimeter pieces of heat shrink. Uh, like I said, I think these are three millimeter diameter or four millimeter diameter, so um, it's a good idea to have a lot of this around. I have one of these, so obviously I'm running thin. Um, good idea also have one of these, just in case. So we're gonna take this. We're gonna take our three pieces right here and just slide them on as such. Make sure it's covered completely. Um, and I will be back momentarily getting myself some divisive heat. Um, I have seen people melt or do the heat, like shrink heat shrink with a soldering iron. I will say it's just deplorable. Please don't do it. Um, I will be back momentarily. Excuse a mess on my bench. I haven't used it in a while. Need to get to cleaning it, but I have a bag of these Strike Anywhere matches. Um, I need to just go online order some Bic lighters, but these will do for the time being, I think. I can find a place to strike it. So you see, you have the lid here, and then line up your heat shrink. Um, don't hold your heat too close to the motor. You obviously don't want to demagnetize anything. Um, Obviously it's not too big a risk, but it's just, you know, safety is a good precaution to take. So I sort of screwed up that middle one, so if I can move it up and I can't. Um, if you do put it too short, um, it's always a good idea just to grab a second piece. Um, it's kind of, un I mean, it's kind of OCD and it's also kind of functionality. Um, the less exposed contacts you have, the the likelihood of there being a significant damage to your quad is much lower. And we all like low damage. Can't get this match to light. Uh bad match, let's just get another one. So we just take this match, hold it under. Um Sometimes when I have it mounted on the frame, I learned this trick from, I think it's, um, what's his name? Anyway, I learned this on YouTube. Uh, if you have it mounted on the frame, uh, it's, a, it's a good idea to spin it. Uh, it dissipates the heat. I mean, obviously these motors are designed using these little, like, flanges. They're designed to actually take air in and um, push it down through the motor so nothing overheats significantly. So we can do this, I'm gonna do this one more time with you guys, and then I'm gonna speed it up so that we can uh, get to another part of the video. Alrighty, uh, let's get started with this next one. So obviously, as you see, as opposed to um, one of these motors only going this far, it's about twice as long now, and it takes us out to almost to the middle of the frame where we can wrap it around and put it on the four in one. So let's do this next one here. So, Gonna bend all these wires back out, and we're gonna take just to keep it consistent. So we had yellow on the right, black in the middle, and red on the left. So we're gonna do the same thing on this motor. Um, everything is tinned already. Uh, if you haven't tinned, it would be a great idea to do so now. Um, so yeah. Um, it's always a better idea to, um, I don't know, I probably said this twice in the video already, but it's always a much better idea to have more wire than you need as opposed to less, because as you see here, adding wire is an arduous process, and it takes forever. It's taken me three, four minutes to do one motor, whereas if you had just 
stayed intelligent, unlike me, you could have just mounted the motors straight on. But for the sake of the video, we're going to leave them unmounted and we'll see where that gets us. So, I'm going to do one last joint right here. And we're going to get our heat shrink and cut it up. Get diagonal cutters. So, um, if any of you guys are watching this as a sort of a first time, you know, type build, uh, things that you absolutely should have while doing this kind of stuff. A hemostat, uh, you can usually get this in a fishing section of like Walmart or whatever. Um, or you can just get them online or medical supply. Um, when you, especially when you start soldering higher gauge wire like these, they take heat incredibly well. And uh, it's not a competition to show how tough your fingers are. So save yourself the pain, buy yourself a heat locking hemostat. Uh, I might leave a link in the description. Um, a good soldering iron is a must. Um, it is really annoying to solder with a bad soldering iron, as you well know. Uh, as some of you guys who are watching this that have done this for probably longer than I have or longer than I've even lived, um, it is always imperative that you have a good soldering iron. And uh, silicone wire. Uh, if it's not silicone wire, then it's not good. Um, Enamel coated wire tends to uh, burn when there's too much current pumped through and that is um, just not healthy for your motor or for anything else. Uh, so here we're going to get a couple pieces going. You can see here that um, there's a long exposed piece so we're going to want extra heat shrink to cover that. We see here that there's a short, so we're just, we, a short uh, piece so we can use less. Um, yeah, so slide these on. Uh, I'm going to try a different approach this time and see if it work, helps me any. I'm going to do one motor at a time, or one one motor wire at a time. Um, it was kind of a, not a pain to line those all up and do them in one go last time, so we'll see if this approach has any benefit. Uh, it's not even in the frame. Um, so, there. We got that. Um, let's do this next motor here. Um, there are much, much better ways to do this. As you see, I just burned off one of my um, wires. Uh, if you can afford it, buy a heat gun. Uh, they're not cheap, but um, I'll see if I can uh, find a way to show you guys how to modify like a hairdryer or something. Um, they're not cheap, and obviously I don't have one. Uh, so a big lighter is probably a better way to do it. Um, Anything that doesn't involve fire, uh, obviously a big lighter is fire, but it's controlled. Um, so hair dryers work, but they take an incredibly long time. It takes probably about a minute to heat shrink something of this size. So imagine heat shrinking, you know, a big power lead or something. It's just not efficient enough. But if you have, I mean, if you have time to spare, who am I? Who am I to tell you not to? So I'm gonna go back here, put this on. Um, you see the difference. And the quality of the wire as you merge the two. One's just nice and supple, and the other one's just brittle. Uh, I've used these motors in other builds before, and they just kind of um, sometimes the uh, wire just kind of snaps. It's, uh, it's uncanny, but it's what we have on hand, and videos need to be made. So, yeah. So there's two. Um, I'm going to go through the next in high speed because we just spent six, seven minutes doing this, but um, they look kind of nice. So we're going to do the other two and mount them on the, mount them on the frame. We're also going to go through desoldering the uh, power leads from this Emacs Femto board and we're going to uh, figure out where we want to mount the, uh, where and how we're going to mount the receiver. Uh, there are pins for it, but... Um, I'm not sure that's the way I want to go. I want to keep the stack as low as I can because there is going to be an AIO camera at the top. Uh, it's coming in tomorrow or the day after, I believe. It's the VM275T with the UFL connector. Um, uh, so once we get that in, we can do that. But I want to keep the stack low, and it's going to be a really nice build by the time it's done. So we're going to go into high speed. I'll see you. Well, 
I'm not gonna cut out, but I'll see you guys after this is done. Uh, one last thing before I go into high speed. Um, I have a nice pair of wire strippers and a diagonal cutter. And I will, I can confidently say I use these diagonal cutters more often than my nice wire stripper to strip wires. Um, it's just more convenient and just better. Um, so, yes, now we will really go into high speed. Alright, so we are back now. Um, I haven't heat shrunk these two just yet, but... I'll do that while I talk to you about what's coming up in the build. Um, so, we're gonna mount these onto the frame, um, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna we're gonna go into how we're gonna wire up the flight controller. Um, I will print out a wiring diagram to keep in the background, or well, keep underneath, so that if any of you guys do decide to follow along this build, you can just. Um, use the pins that you see appropriate. Uh, obviously everything I do will not correspond to what you do. Um, people build quads differently and based on what they want. Um, but like I said, the purpose of this build is to be something just like a fun little build to have in my backpack. Or um, I'm a student and at school drones don't really fly. So um, taking a five or six inch build to school kind of draws some attention. So a little tiny build that can, you know, rip around and, you know, I can kind of really experience my campus from a different area. It would be really, 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 really cool. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you, um, there is another option I was looking into for VTX and camera. I was thinking a, um, a uh, TVS Unify Pro Micro. Um, I've heard good things, but I think that might just be a little bit too big. Uh, there is a, I think the Wolf Whoop WT07, or if I might be messing that up, goes up to 200 milliwatts, and it's a little a tiny whoop size camera. So, if anybody wants to, all right. So, just uh, my SD card filled up, so I just had to go offload and put a new one in. But right back to where we were, we were putting uh, motors on, uh, motors onto the frame. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna put the next two on. I'm gonna speed this up because we're just screwing stuff onto a piece of carbon fiber. And as I put this last screw in, um, take a look at the quad. So uh, obviously this is designed for 20 by 20. Um, I have my ESC down below. Like I said, it's not in just yet. It'll be in probably later this day. So we're just gonna take a look at how we're gonna route these wires. So I'm gonna have uh, get the standoff get out. Getting one of these is highly advisable. They're really, really useful. So we're probably gonna want to look into. Um, I love these nylon screws, by the way. You cut them to length. Do whatever you want with them. They're the best. So we're going to take out four nylon screws, and I think we're going to go with some very short standoffs. So I think, for you, I am precise. Um, these are... I don't know if you can see the caliper display, just good. All right, so these are five and a half millimeter standoffs. Um, so I guess we're gonna need four of these. And um, another little problem I have with using the Femto is that it's I think it was designed for the Emacs Baby Hawk. Um, it's only when I got it that I realized it didn't actually have mounting holes on it. So we ha I'm gonna have to either design or go on Thingiverse and find a 20 by 20 mount for it. But for now, let's just get this power lead desoldered and let's go do a little quick rundown about 
what's actually on here and uh, how we're gonna Aria from the future here um, you see I mounted my motors but uh, if you watch all the way to the end you'll see that there's a step that I missed I put heat shrink over the wires so that it makes sure that they are completely protected from prop strikes so be sure to do that step at the end he missed that the locking he missed that because it kind of keeps it nice and keeps my hands from burning um, I like my hands I'm sure you guys like yours as well Let's add a little bit of solder to flow that joint and get it to lift. There. Get rid of that little bridge there. And then let's do the positive lead now. Uh, I would keep this JST lead handy, uh, depending on the uh, foreign one you buy, or if you do decide to go uh, individual ESCs, which I actually would, but foreign ones were cheaper. Um, then I would most definitely keep this because if you do run individual ESCs, uh, this acts as a PDB as well. But because I'm doing the foreign one, I am just going to be soldering the uh, signal to the middle pad right here. Uh, so let's do a little quick rundown of what's over here. I think I'm going to get rid of the uh, man. This board is hot. Um, it's a F3 board, um, no OSD. So. If that's what you're looking for, Pico BLX, the uh, race flight, uh, what's it called, the millivolt, uh, has an OSD, I think. Uh, so definitely those boards are something to look into. Um, but like I said, quick, uh, cheap build, uh, really no need for either. So first step in kind of preparing this board for what we want is to depin. Um, this is optional, uh, obviously, I think some FreeSky XM Plus receivers actually come with pins. So if you choose that route, um, actually I think mine has pins, but if you choose that route, uh, then you can just put it straight on and uh, 